Hey YouTube, this is the Death Scouter making another video, and this one deals with what if George Bush got his way in 2005 and allowed us to invest a portion of our Social Security contributions into a fund that would have been our own money to keep and pass on to our heirs as if it were money sitting in the bank. So I am the Death Scouter. I have a YouTube channel. I put everything out there from car repairs and appliance repairs to financial education. Anything that helps you save money or make money, I like to put it on YouTube. And please like and subscribe to my channel. You can find me at Death Scouter, all one word. And we can get into the numbers right now. So here's the way it works when you get a paycheck. You'll notice something called FICA tax, F-I-C-A. That is your social security. And if these were the median incomes from 2005 up to 2021, which they are according to the Google machine, you would have earned $46,000 median income in 2005. You pay 6.2%. Your employer pays 6.2% for a combined total of 12.4% that gets sent into the Social Security Insurance Administration. Okay, so if you're self-employed, you just pay this number all, all yourself. What George Bush wanted us to do was be allowed to take one third of that, 33%, one third of that and invest it on our own. And each year, as your income changed, you come up with one third more, one third more, one third more for the next 17 years. And what we did for this exercise is because I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know what the future holds, I just took the last known number and we're going to apply that for all future years just to keep it simple, right? But now you know where these numbers come from, right? One third of our Social Security contribution starting in 2005. So let's go over here to the worksheet and see how the math plays out. So $1,911 earning 10%, which is what the U.S. stock market averages over any 10-year period. This would have been your 10% growth. Any contribution for that year, now understand in the first year, your contribution is your starting amount. So that's why this is zero. You add all these three together, you get a year ending number, which I just split out and said how much of it came out of your pocket and how much of it was profit, okay? The year ending number becomes the year beginning number and the math works again. 10% plus the next year's 2003, 2003, you see that? The next year's contribution to Social Security, and you get a year ending balance. And the math continues and continues and continues. So if you were age 25, when I started this in year number one, 2005, the year that Bush wanted to put this in play, what would you have today? Well, 17 years later, you'd be 41 years old. You'd have 92, almost $93,000 sitting for you of your money in Social Security. Now remember, this is just Social Security that's already coming out of your paycheck. This requires no sacrifice on your part. This also does not take into account any money you'd earn through an IRA or a retirement plan or a 401k, etc. This is just what's already coming out of your pay paycheck for Social Security. What happens when you're age 65? At age 65, you'd have $1.6 million sitting there. Isn't that impressive? This would have been your money that you can pass on to your heirs. Your children could inherit it. You could fund your church, an animal rescue program, the Boy Scouts, whatever is important to you. This would have been your money. And notice something, and this is the power of compounding interest. This is why I scream from the highest mountaintop that young people must invest early. Because this exponential growth, this yearly growth, gets bigger every year because it's interest on your interest on your interest because these numbers just keep adding upon themselves. When you're age 65, notice that you are earning 100000 or more every year. This is the power of compound interest over time and why you must start early. Life expectancies. Let's look at that real quick. Black males, you live to be 69 years old you would be able to pass 1.7 million to your heirs. White men live to be 76. You would get 3.3 million to pass to your heirs. Black women live to be 77.8, or we'll just say 78 years. You have even more at 4 million. 
and white women, you win the prize. You live to be on average 81 years of age, which means you would have 5.4 million to pass to your heirs. That, was, that is what would have happened had George Bush got his way in 2005. What has really happened is Social Security continues, as Al Gore said, put it in a lock box to protect it. And it would have earned the inflation rate of, and I'm being generous here, 2%. Would you still have a million dollars at 65 at 2%? No. 161,000, a far, far, far cry from 1.16 million. And this is not your money. This money stays in the Social Security Fund. So, as you can see from the math, we could have ended government dependence in just one generation had this one agenda, and I don't say that you have to support everything that George Bush did, but on this one agenda item, had he gotten his way, many of us would be retiring millionaires and passing tremendous wealth onto our children. And we would have propped up the Social Security program and ended government dependence in one generation. Hey, this is the Death Scouter. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'd love to hear your comments on this video.